technology uh, at Twilio. So I wanted to open just with a couple of slides to set the stage. Um, I, I have to say we've been talking a lot about the potential of AI for a decade, and we still do not see uh, as many real world examples as we would like, uh, where we are seeing uh, some current use cases within support uh, within TSIA membership uh, is really looking at, you know, some areas in self-service, uh, specifically analytics driven uh, search, which has uh, definitely helped with uh, self-service success and deflection. Uh, agent assisted service, whether it's uh, maybe auto routing cases based on previous expertise uh, and some of that same searching uh, to help agents find the right answer more quickly. And we are beginning to see some use of insights, mining customer case history, identifying friction points, uh, thinking about helping with, uh, with customer success scores for accounts, for example. But if we look where uh, the potential is in the future, you know, I've been talking about some of this uh, for a couple of years, and what's exciting is almost everything on my futures list is something that AWS is already delivering. So um, great to go from concept to reality today with Esther. Uh, but, you know, the potential here is really moving to more real time and proactive. And now that we're starting to see more adoption of uh, voice, real time voice analysis, think about uh, sort of whispering in the ear of a support tech while they're on a phone call. So they don't have to process the information, type in notes uh, for a case to get recommendations. The recommendations can start coming up automatically uh, as the phone conversation is happening or the email uh, pops into your inbox. Uh, so I do think that we're starting to see some elements of that and Esther's gonna be talking about that today. Uh, another thing that has been uh, such a challenge is just capturing a lot of what's going on in these conversations into case notes. And we all know that probably 10% of the conversation actually ends up into case notes. And with voice to text being automated, uh, we're starting to see much more complete history of what's happening, which is fantastic, not only for problem resolution, but also just to identify those friction points, what's really troubling uh, customers. And getting uh, much more trend information for managers I think currently we usually are looking at trends, what happened in the last week or the last month, but being able to get that in real time, in particular, if you have multiple support centers, uh, that is uh, you know, huge potential, I think, for uh, kind of moving to a more proactive state with your customers. The final comment I wanted to make is uh, certainly generative uh, chat is uh, enabling a new sort of uh, chat for self-service and for employee service than we've had in the past. Uh, as many as 70% of our members have tried to invest in chat bots and only about 20% ever went live. Uh, so there is huge potential uh, not only to do it better, but it's a tool customers want to play with. So I think that you can definitely see more deflection uh, coming from the, the newer tools on the market. But you've got to focus on the user experience, uh, both for the customers and for the employees. Employees. And I don't think we always do as, as much usability trials as we should before we throw things out on a, on a website or introduce it to the employee desktop. So, you know, keep that in mind. The customer experience is paramount. We know the support experience has a lot to do with renewals and expense selling potential. So ultimately, uh, the way we do this can help drive ARR. And that's something that everybody's very concerned about today. So uh, enough for me, uh, I was talking about what we are seeing at TSIA as some current use cases, but Esther, I would love to hear from you what you're seeing in service support uh, around, you know, the current use cases. Sure. And, you know, AI and ML is just entwined into the fabric of Amazon and AWS. We've been investing in it not only to sell to customers, but really first we invested just for Amazon itself for over 20 years. Um, we've been using it uh, for customer experience improvements. We use it for our e-commerce recommendation engine, um, our fulfillment centers, the robots are using it to figure out what is the best path for their picking routes. In our supply chain, we use AIML to really optimize our forecasting and capacity planning 
And then we've got drones doing prime air using computer vision. We have Amazon Go stores similarly using computer vision. And then Alexa, of course, with you know more than 30 different machine learning um, models that are helping customers really manage their smart home shop, get information, you know, run their music and entertainment. Um, and so we really, you know, live and breathe AI ML all the time. And part of what Amazon did is to take all that learning and figure out how can we take that, package it up and enable our customers to use that in their organizations. And, you know, given Amazon's experience on the customer service and support side, it's a, you know, it made natural sense to really target that. Um, and take what we have to employ to really improve customer experience as well as the employee experience. So many of you, I'm sure, have called into an Amazon uh, customer support center and experienced, you know, the predictive nature of how the system is trying to guess why you're calling. Um, you know, I've had interactions where they know my package is already delayed um, or that, uh, you know, I'm calling about certain issues with my orders. And so AWS has been really focused upon that. And we've had customers uh, such as Intuit and Pinterest and Airbnb who are all looking to employ that AI ML technology. And so just like you mentioned, John, you know, the main three use cases that we really see where AI ML is really being employed uh, within customer service and support is along those three lines, that self-service, agent-assisted experience, and then on the analytics side. Um, so on the self-service side, we see AI um, really being able to let customers self-serve. 81% um, of customers say they wanna take care of their issues themselves as possible and avoid actually talking to an, an agent. And so what we offer is the ability to um, enable search at a faster and more accurate capability and also to have interactive conversations with bots. Um, and I know when you said that, you know, many of your customers have, our clients have shared that their bots aren't going into production, that like breaks my heart. So um, our, our customers have been able to deflect calls and, um, you know, reduce the certain call time. So for example, uh, Wafed is a bank that we work with. They deployed a, um, they, the, the customer who was calling in to check their account balance, it used to take four minutes and 30 seconds for the interaction to actually, in the bot to tell them how long, uh, how much their balance was. And so after they moved over to AWS and our self-service uh, bot, we reconfigured that, allowed for um, account authentication as well. They were able to reduce that time to just 29 seconds. Um, so it was just a, you know, step function change in what that user experience was like. And so we really try and enable those kind of interactions on multiple channels. And so we really look at it from omni-channel, whether it's the web, whether you're um, come calling in through a, a phone, uh, if you're interacting through some sort of messaging platform, uh, we are really there to try and create a consistent customer experience that will really enable your uh, your end users to access the answers that they want and complete the kinds of transactions that they're looking to achieve. Uh, we're also employing AI to really automatically, you know, figure out why your callers are or why customers are calling in or interacting, what their problem is, so that we can get them to the right agent. Um, and the right queue on the first try, instead of having to transfer them or, you know, you have one conversation and then you got to go to the next one. So we're really focused on how do we enable and um, self-serve and automate a lot of those things that used to require more human intervention. And then the next one is really around agent assist. So this is around how do we automate a lot of those tasks that uh, the agents are having to do, like note taking, uh, translation, summarization, we have used AI to really automate all of those tasks um, out of the box. And now with uh, generative AI, even those summaries, which before we were just taking bits and pieces of the call and putting that together as a summary, 
But now with generative AI, we are able to create a much more um, beautifully crafted narrative that can um, can summarize the call in a much more you know kind of human language capability. We're also able to analyze, provide insights on you know the sentiment of the call so that the supervisors can be alerted if calls are going south. And the whole point of this is to really resolve those calls faster. And the last part is around analytics, where we then take all this rich uh, customer interaction, whether it's on chat or on phone or um, through other channels, and we analyze that to see, okay, from a compliance perspective, how are we doing? From a quality and insurance perspective, how are those calls going and interactions going? And are there ways in which there are new reasons uh, for people are interacting with the customer and support center? And are there new questions that we need to train our agents and prepare them to answer? Uh, and so those are really the three areas that we've been seeing. And so we've developed solutions specifically to address these needs and use cases.